So you said, if you don't, I, I'm going to give you, I'm going to be generous, I'm going to give you 10, but then I want all the, the returns back that you get from the, the transfer. And, and um, did you impose a sanction, may I ask? You did. <laughs> okay, so you said you don't give it back to me, you have to give me at least four. Okay, so that, that is one strategy which a few people took. I remember the last exercise we did with money. I decided to uh, minimize my gains to, to the 10 that you're giving me, so I'm giving four. I'm asking for a sanction of four. Mm -hmm. And the payback of 11, which is half, so, you know. Yeah, so picking up, and you, asked, you did ask for a sanction. You did ask, yeah. Um, picking up from what we talked about yesterday, maybe being a type one or type two person, what does Mateo's uh, strategy imply? Yeah, I saw that one. I was like, huh. So there wasn't. There was one person that didn't say whether there was a sanction, so I left them out. But uh, if it was split equally, fine. That's the way I would like to have done. But yeah. once I noticed, I'm not gonna do this. So yeah. Okay. So that impo How 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 greedy is the person, right? So that impo that implies something about their character to you. We can also think that. If we want to actually make a punishment always effective, you just have to make the punishment very big, and there are certain implications of that, right? Yes. For me, punishments just help me understand that person better. Um, depending on what type of punishment they think I care about, and they're also communicating what's important to them. Um, so I actually view punishments more as helping me understand the person who thinks they're trying to punish me. Can you give an example? Um, so, like, if the pro IMD says, hey, if you guys don't come to class for three days out of the year, we'll expel you. Uh huh, expel Then you. Okay. they're saying that we care enough about that to make sure that we come. So it implies a little bit of what the other person values when, when they impose certain sanctions. Sure. Absolutely. One thing we know about sanctions is that it changes the framework of the engagement. So when a sanction is present, so one, another study that Fair and List did is that they had situations where the sanction could or could not be imposed. And they asked people later on, what is this game about? You actually can control people not to commit the crime. That's a great question, right? So how much does this punishment have to hurt, right? Because we learned about um, in the influence class, we talked about scarcity, right? Scarcity plays on people's loss aversion. People don't like to lose. How painful does that punishment need to be to be equal or more effective than people's psychological mechanisms, like guilt, right? What do you think? Um, my parents didn't have any, didn't voice any opinion about grades when my sister okay. and I were growing up. Like, I knew some friends whose parents were very strict about getting all A's or you're in trouble. Yeah, or giving rewards. I also had friends who, if you got an all A's in your card, you would get, like, some kind of a gift or something. So that's another good point. We mentioned the role of sanctions and fear. When a sanction is, is present, especially if the sanction is painful enough, there's more fear implied or imposed on the interaction with the other person. So good point. To promise to over deliver, uh, and I show risks that can come up. So I show both the positives and negative side of the situation. Yeah. So consistency of word and deed. Do I deliver on what I say? That absolutely builds trust. And if we think about how we want to develop a relationship, or how do we want to destroy a relationship, it would be that. Do I do I say what I do I deliver what I say? Right? So where does trust come from? Empathy. Absolutely. We mentioned that. Showing interest in others' well-being. Right? And sometimes sacrificing one's own. In this game, right, some people actually gave the other person more back than they asked for. Okay? Um, sacrificing one's own. Showing vulnerability, which is very much related to point number two. Um, are you willing to put yourself out there to show that you're vulnerable towards the other party? Being open to criticism and change, especially as a leader. In New York, you have to go through a, a turnstile, put your card in. Mm -hmm. Here, you just walk on the metro and they randomly sometimes yeah. yeah, and, and also for business, it's exactly the same. Every, there's not so many rules. Just by saying something and agreeing verbally yeah. is as, as strong as signing a paper. Yeah. So they can take you to court if you like. So it's a totally different mentality. Yeah, absolutely. And there are some cultures where all you need to do is give your word, and that's as much as a written contract. And there are other countries that you would never rely on someone's word, right? 